Welcome to FMTraining.tv. My name is Margaret. I'll be your broadcast engineer for today. I'm here with the wonderful Christian Schmitz, who we always love to have on the show, the creator of the Monkey Bread uh, FileMaker plugin, which is legitimately absolutely fantastic. If you're like, man, FileMaker seems limited sometimes. Uh, install MBS. I have had MBS for so long that I had someone ask me on stream the other day, oh, is that like a native thing that FileMaker does? And I'm like, I don't think so, but I've had a monkey bread plugin for so long. I don't remember what FileMaker does and what MBS does anymore. But if you don't recognize it, it's probably a really cool thing that MBS does for me because I have the plugin. I highly recommend you get it. There is a free version, which had a limited amount of functions. I think we had a series on that relatively recently about different functions that uh, the MBS plugin can do for you that still exists inside the free version. But I highly recommend you buy it. It is absolutely worth the money. I will bring up the website real fast, monkeybreadsoftware.com. Ta-da! So pick this up. This is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I don't know what the number is now. Seven, over 7,200 functions. I knew the exact number a week ago, but I don't think it's probably a number anymore. Da -da 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 -da. Let's see. Real quick, let's talk about fmtraining.tv. So you're like, what do you guys do? We do live training. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, and... Wednesday next week, we have Christian Schmidt some of us doing a lot of MBS stuff, which is always fantastic. Uh, we always love having him on the show, talk about stuff. We got new examples for the plugin today because the plugin, along with having a bajillion functions, also has a bajillion example files to show you what you're doing. Uh, tomorrow will be the 14.1 preview. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to pick up a bundle. I know this training doesn't work for everybody. Um, we cover a lot of topics in the bundle. Uh, pretty much everything in very small, bite-sized videos. Uh, highly animated, all that jazz, so feel free to pick that up. Also, again, you should definitely go get this. <laughs> Seriously, it makes development so much easier. <laughs> uh, with that being said, I think we're pretty good. What are we doing today, Christian? Well, uh, we'll take a look on a few examples for the MBS plugin. Mm -hmm. So let me share my screen. So let's say... You are new to the plugin. Um, you may have downloaded the plugin, expanded the, the archive, and you get a folder with a lot of stuff. Then uh, you find examples here. Let me just make a search. So we have currently 659 examples. <laughs> so if you have a week of vacation uh, and you get about 100 done each day, <laughs> that would be five minutes per, per file. So. Five minutes for each file, and you are busy for a week. Yeah, and you may have some time left on Sunday uh, night. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> and you can go through the examples, see what they do, and maybe find some interesting things uh, you may want to copy to your, to your solution. And we've got a few new examples here. So let's let's show you here. I, I recently wrote a blog post about one of those examples. And the thing uh, we came up is um, Apple offers uh, this map, map, app, Maps application. For the Maps application, uh, they need to map addresses to coordinates. And so Apple has a big address database. And we got the idea, well, we could use this address to help people uh, enter addresses to our database, just for people on on. Uh, Mm -hmm. On Mac, of course, in this case, because you could make a cross-platform version, of course, using Google Maps, but then you have to sign up and get a developer key and uh, eventually pay if you get into the millions. But I thought, since we already have the plugin functions for that, we could just make a sample file and show everyone how it works. So in this case here on the example, uh, someone could maybe type in the street name and make a typo, put in a... Uh, number for the house, and then uh, put in a name of the village as they think it should be. So the village of Oberwinter is actually a part of the city of Riemann. So Hauptstraße, Hauptstraße is getting expanded to Hauptstraße, it's Main Street, one, two, three, and we get a zip code here automatically and the country is added. That's cool. So uh, the user doesn't need to really type it correctly. So let me try it, try it live. So it seems to work. Let's go to another example. This, for example, is um, some location in Austin. 
And uh, we get the street here, Palmer, get connected to West Palmer Lane. We get uh, the state and uh, the zip code. So that's another example, somewhere in Austin. Again, uh, we get a zip code. I think the zip code is the most important thing uh, because people don't always remember them. Another one here, so Pont Potrero, and you get here the avenue added. I think this can be very useful for a few solutions to help you know, validate address here again. Uh, CT, what's it? Um, that's really cool, especially like you said, especially yeah. with the zip codes, because there's a bajillion the zip, zip codes. Zip codes. <laughs> yeah, I... another one here, uh, no place phone, so it, it may sometimes not find something. Um, and then here, this is in Berlin, there's a, a Torstrasse, which is a Gate Street 1. So house number 1, get zip code 10119. Remember that? Now we go to the same street, but number 170. And you get a different zip code. Okay, so that's like pretty accurate. There is a quick question. Actually, we got two. Uh, will it warn if there might be more than one match? Uh, well, we can check in the script. So we get uh, the locations back. And, um, so, zip locality, city center. So technically, it can have uh, more details here, and it can have several uh, several results. So we got here just one place mark. So um, I'm not sure about the business names. Let's take a look uh, how this works. So we have a function here. CL, so core location, geocoder, geocode address string. It mm -hmm. just gets an address string. And then I later made this option wait. So this function can either work in the background, so the user doesn't need to wait, or you can have the plugin wait for the result. So in our example, we pass one, so we wait. The locator will run, and later we can ask for the result. And in this case, we get here the place mark count. So we pass in our ID of the geolocator. And because we use IDs again, we can have several of them at the same time. So you ask how many places did you find with that name? Um, maybe more than one. In our case, we just check if we got uh, zero, so it's not found. Uh, there could be an error, of course, and otherwise we just ask the values. So let's see. So the lector is what we want to know. So there is a name of the place mark. So it can have a name and uh, maybe uh, a turn back. And we can just try something maybe. Yeah, I'll just make a new record and say what, what could we find? Richard um, Carlton Consulting, because there's a couple addresses I Richard could. Richard Carlton Consulting. Can we? Add something like a city, maybe? Uh, California? We could try. California. Okay. Not no found. place found. Uh, let's try Fairfield. Fairfield. Mm -hmm. oh, maybe I don't know that. I don't know. No place found. So it's, uh, it's a geolocator. I could maybe also add a function for the map view because the map view may actually be able to, let me see. Oh, uh, we have our examples. So we have here Mac and iOS with it. And there's MapKit and just create a map, put it in here. We should call consulting. No, it doesn't seem to work. So let's see something else maybe, or. Let's try should, Lake Tahoe. Um, I guess maybe that might be, be like a place. Oh, maybe I, I look up the address here. Mm -hmm. Where is this little company? <laughs> There's yeah. one. I, I can give you the, uh, there you go. Yep. 
Okay, but that's just building somewhere. So I'm not sure if it would work for business systems, but I could look that up mm -hmm. later. So let's take a look on how the script works. So we have this uh, values. Uh, so the street address, uh, then you have on the uh, street number, which is called here sub so far. Uh, there's a locality, usually the city name, a sub locality, like the suburb. There's an administrative area. California, like you know, different countries have different structures. So USA has states. France has departments, so subattractive. That's another level. That's um, the county. We call them counties. Yeah. Yeah, county for you. Postal address. There's a country has a code, a name. It may be water that you hit with your coordinate. Um, uh, we can also do the other way around, I think, here, a uh, reverse geolocation. So you can put in the, uh, the coordinates and then see what's there, which can also be interesting. It would be interesting um, to just type in random numbers and see what it drops back at you. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so... Where was I? Uh, so area of interest sometimes here, like Eiffel Tower, Disneyland, some thing that's there. And then uh, if it's a bigger place, uh, you get a region, region so you can uh, show it in the map, uh, the formatted address sometimes and distance. Let me just check if we have, uh, if we have an example file for this. So, when you go on the documentation, you always find the example files listed here. So there is uh, address mapping and CLG locator co-location and that is. So let's take a look. So we can uh, reverse geocode from a location. So this thing is named uh, the town hall, the red town hall in a street in Berlin. And it's there at this coordinates. So in this case, you would get uh, a name for it. So. That's actually quite cool. Uh, yeah, so. Let's go on Richard Carlton Consulting. Yeah. Um, so let's say I copy an address here. Mm -hmm. And geocode this address. I did, I did find something, yeah, Santa Clara. So let's see, um, we have a location, longitude, so this, and a latitude, and now we are seeing a lot there. Did it work? Okay. I assume so, but the information oh, is yeah. identical, so. Okay, so it, uh, it found something, but it didn't give it a name here. Uh, so I'm sorry. Uh, maybe no, we need to find the offices have hopped around a bit. I was just curious what it would do. Um, what's like another name for something that would be in the same spot? Uh, what happens if you type in the Golden Gate Bridge or like a landmark? Like you were mentioning that landmarks would get something. So. Golden Gate Bridge, uh, San Francisco. I don't know. Uh, See, okay, yeah, you get oh, hey. the name going to get a bridge, yeah. Well, that's what we entered. So, uh, I think the more interesting thing is to do the reverse location. Mm -hmm. Hey, doesn't like the number. Um, oh, I should, I should remove it. Huh? So, yeah, so yeah, if okay. you do the reverse lookup for the coordinates, you would get uh, a name here. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It is interesting. That's just something you could play with. Yes. So, Another from your week the trying the plugins, you would have 50 minutes to check this one. <laughs> Address map. Oh, yeah. We did that before here yeah, as an example. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Do we have any questions on, on the location? Uh, map kit is only yeah. Apple. Yeah. yeah, this is using uh, the built-in things from Apple. Mm -hmm. um, the great thing is for us is uh, it's all paid by buying a device. Um, so you can just use it. No fee, no registration, no, no identifier. Uh, it's rate limited usually, so you can ask uh, a couple of uh, queries per minute. Uh, there's a limit uh, you may hit, so you get an error. Usually um, when I use it uh, for my own databases, it's something we uh, do when you enter an address. We do the lookup and then we save the coordinates so we can later do um, searches like find me everyone around a certain place. So like if I go to a conference, I can find all my clients uh, in a circle around it so I can invite them to join me at the conference and uh, talk about FileMaker. If you uh, sign up for another service, like from, um, from Google Maps, uh, you would have to get a developer key. And if you get over the free limit, you would have to pay for every query. Uh, we don't have it listed here as server safe, but maybe I, we could check that. Maybe I should start a to-do list. <laughs> check core location on server. I'm not sure if it uh, simply uh, doesn't work at all or if um, if it would work and I should just change the, the documentation, <laughs> you know? Because a lot of features are not marked as server compatible because we never tried them. Or, mm -hmm. But for some features, it's obvious. Like if we can't open a window, we the window functions don't work. But uh, here this was uh, especially with the option to wait for the result may actually work. Okay, uh, if I don't have any questions on this, let's go and see what else do we have. Um, data detector, also a nice feature. Also Mac only. We have more on Windows later. But um, <laughs> So sometimes you have uh, text in the user interface. And you may know that already uh, if you have uh, some text in email message. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I make an email and have some text here? And usually, let's see, send it to myself. So if you have a text in an Apple Mail application, it may actually uh, show you, yeah, it show you uh, that this can be a link and you can actually open it, uh, that this is a phone number, you could call it. Mm -hmm. So like here, uh, it detected that this is a link mm -hmm. and you can do things like here, seeing what's inside. On the phone number, you can add to context, you can call it, message, show it in large text. Then here for the address, uh, you actually get the map and mm -hmm. you know the address and you can add it to context, open. So you get actions based on text. And we thought about, we could use this features from Apple um, to, to uh, use it in our FileMaker solution. And Apple actually has an AP4 for, for this. So we can run the data detectors on this text, which may be an email in your in your solution or chat message from someone. And uh, we get structured information here as a JSON to see, oh, there's a phone number, a type phone number with that text on a certain position in the text. Here it found a, a date, it found a link, it found an address, some travel information like here an air, like a flight for an airline. Here Lufthansa Delta. Um, then here an address, another phone number, a date range, first to fifth. Um, so it has a duration, and another link which is an email address. So we thought about it. It would be more useful not to show you the JSON. It would be useful to have an action menu. Ooh. So this is combining the functions for for the data detectors with the functions for JSON and the function for showing a menu. So this menu is made with the MBS plugin. Oh, and we just cool. put a lot of things in and you can actually click on them and something happens. Well, this would launch here Apple Maps or Google Maps. Are we able to do that? Yeah. 
So you actually, so you could offer your users uh, an action button for if you have text like this and it finds some action, um, then you could um, offer them the menus here. Technically, you can use our regular expression functions to do the same for Windows or for server automation. Mm -hmm. Um, you would just have to make regular expressions to find phone numbers and stuff like this, but uh, built in by Apple. And because it's uh, internal to the system, Apple can itself use uh, the machine learning stuff. So maybe more accurate than just doing a simple regex. And now let's talk about how this works. So we have a function, mm -hmm. regex data detector where we tell it uh, the things we are interested in. So it can search for different things and you decide what you want. So date, address, link, phone number, transit information. Mm -hmm. And we pass in uh, the block of text. And then it will do its magic and give us back a big JSON. <laughs> in this case, uh, we first count it. And then if, if count is zero, nothing found, uh, there is no menu. So if you have this text in a field, you could, uh, on record open, uh, run the, the, the data detector, see if you get something, and then either show or hide your action button. And when you uh, when the user clicks on the button, um, you would create a new context menu. So this menu create menu thing, and context menus work on Mac and Windows. So Everyone using Windows can also use our context menus with a plugin. And to get the JSON a little bit faster, we use our JSON functions here. So we go through the array and ask for the type. And so if we find a phone number, mm -hmm. we ask for the phone number. Then we uh, mask here the phone number a little bit uh, because uh, we create menu commands and we directly attach to the menu command the expression to run by FileMaker for what to do when you click on this menu. So the copy phone number menu receives an uh, MBS command to put text on the clipboard. It's also useful if you can just copy uh, text from a field. The plugin can just copy any text anywhere with just an MBS call. So we just put in the text, and because the text is part of the calculation, we have to escape it. So we have to here duplicate uh, the backslashes and uh, escape uh, the quotes and escape uh, the new line character if it's included. And then we can add it to the menu. The same as uh, for calling the number, which is just a, a, tel, a telephone URL. Uh, we need to uh, get us URL encoded to encode the phone number text, remove any spaces here if there's some extra spaces, and uh, use show URL from the plugin to shoot when you click this menu entry. Um, then for the other types of data, it repeats. So you can copy a date for transfer information. You can copy it. And here, oh, we, we make a Google search. So uh, if you want to Google for the flight number, we would do that. And then if you have an address, um, we escape it again, get it URL encoded for putting it in a link. And then we have this copy, which just copies the, you know, the text. But you use open Apple Maps, we use an Apple Maps URL, and here a Google Maps URL for Google Maps. I couldn't decide which one to prefer, so I added both. <laughs> if you have a, a Mac with a Maps application, this will open the Maps application. Mm -hmm. And if you have, a, well, if you don't have a Mac with a Maps application, it will just open the browser and show you the map. Then uh, he has a special handling uh, for URLs. So for the link, uh, if it starts with mail to, it's an email. So we allow you to copy this or make a new email by opening the mail client uh, to make a new email. Mm -hmm. Then uh, 
if it's an URL, it's just here, copy the URL or open the URL. And this was a lot of menu entries. Which uh, are all very cool. Out of curiosity, I assume you can. I assume you could also, along with making a menu, make it so that you click a button and it puts all the information into a field or the correct fields, like the phone number yeah, to the sure. phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Whatever you do with the JSON. So uh, we put in a separator here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you saw them, they were grouped. And then it's just the pop-up call. And we don't care for the result because all the actions are directly linked to the, to the menu items. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would have to go here and see if uh, $M is this menu entry, then we do that. Or uh, so we have a lot of if lines below to do for every menu command what to do, but I prefer to just attach every action directly to the menu here. But it's up to you how you use the menu functions. So let me see again. So you see here the separators are between. And Wait, if you well, add- okay. a... Zoom is having a hard time. Can you like run your mouse up and down the menu a few times to get it? There we go. Sorry. No, you're good. I don't know why Zoom is doing that. <laughs> Let's uh, close this example. Yeah, safe. And let's take another one. Oh, I actually have one question real fast. Um, yeah. For the data detector information, was that all the information that you can grab from the OS system, or is there other information that you haven't grabbed in this example? Like, I don't know what else it could grab, but is this phone numbers, addresses, links, and emails are pretty much what it yeah, can Yeah, that's all the types Apple offers. Yes, got it. That's what I was trying to ask. Yeah, so if you have something like tomorrow, it will take the current date and time and then calculate eight o'clock for, for tomorrow. So mm -hmm. you would have a timestamp. But I thought it was useful and this menu thing is, is new this year. Um, it's a cool use uh, of it. <laughs> I think it shows how, how to use it. And, uh, and even if your solution is used on Mac and Windows, you can always have a few extra buttons uh, only for one platform. Like we also have Windows specific features, which you could use on Windows. So, mm -hmm. so let me show you another little thing uh, to be sure. Maybe go to Dyna PDF and talk about attachments to PDF documents. <laughs> I have no idea if you ever saw that, but a PDF document can have attachments. Wait. So you can send someone a PDF document and it can include a FileMaker solution. <laughs> what? <PDF. laughs> Anything. So let's say um, we take a PDF. Let's say which PDF do we take? Maybe. Uh, the license agreement here, and let's say um, we add an attachment. Uh, let's say we add here the installation graph, whatever. And maybe we add another attachment. We say, oh, it's so nice. Let's add this file. So, <laughs> and now we add this and make a new PDF. Export this. This is a new license document. It's a little bit bigger, I think, yeah. Should have a few megabytes more. So um, now let me just go on this uh, because I want to show you in Adobe Reader. So we have our license agreement and here is a little button. and uh, It shows the attachments. And so you can say here, save attachment. Is it desktop safe? And uh, there's my my file maker file from inside. <laughs> the PDF. Just a, a gimmick. And here's a PDF, so you can open it. Uh, so you could have a main PDF, and then you can have uh, attached PDFs within the same file, but the user can open them individually. So uh, we also have in the example letter code to make a button here. This button is difficult to see because it's over the text, but if I click the button, it will open the embedded PDF. Interesting. So you uh, could have a main PDF 
mm-hmm. with a ton of buttons, and each button's button open an attached PDF, and it's all one file. That's kind of insane. I had no idea you could do that. Uh, do you have to have Adobe Reader in order to actually download the attachments? Uh, yes, I think so, because here in a uh, preview from Apple, uh, I don't think there's anywhere here something for the attachment, and the button does nothing. Got it. Okay, so the button no, also this... works only with Adobe Reader. Good to know. Yeah. Apple didn't implement this part of the PDF spec. Other PDF readers may, but usually uh, when I see people with uh, PDFs uh, used in businesses, it's always a reader. So let you, let me show you how you do that. So let's see. First, we have here a just normal file maker thing. We create a, add an attachment. We pick a file. We insert a file. Um, in a new record and yeah so here target is a variable so we insert a file into a variable mm-hmm. if that is successful only then we create the record i've seen a ton of people code it other way around first create the record then insert into the field and if that fails they have to delete the record <laughs> or they have a lot of empty records <laughs> okay. Next thing. Uh, import a PDF that was here directly to the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, add attachment. So this is uh, the script uh, actually building the PDF. Mm-hmm. So we go to the layout. Uh, we create a new Dyna PDF environment. We open the existing PDF from the container and pass in the container here. You could also use open PDF from file to open it from a file path if you have it on disk. Then we import the PDF. Now, if you repeat the steps, you can actually do a merge. Like you can import from several, first import the first PDF here and then import a second PDF and then they would get merged. So then we go here to the related records to find all our nice files to attach. And if if the record is not empty, we can actually use attach file container to attach the container. And we pass in uh, the container with attachment and the file name to show. So this doesn't need to be the same as uh, the attachment original hit. Can be a different. There's also attach a file with an actually file. Go to the documentation. So attach file container. There's also attach file if you have a file pass. And there's attach file text, which is a way to create a text file as an attachment with passing in the text and then specifying the encoding so we can directly make a text file without you having a text file on disk. I prefer to make a lot of things in memory and avoid the temporary files. So we loop over, over all the records until we are at the last one. So next thing we do here is make a button. So um, we edit the page because we want to place a button on a page. So we have to open the page for editing. We have to decide uh, which which embedded file to pick. So I pick in this case index zero, the first one, and get the name. So I know the name of the first file we added. And now I create an go to embedded file action. And I say here, uh, this is a child of the document, uh, index zero, um, it has a specific file name. So, oh, let me look. So. Oh, no, source page. Uh, no source page. So I have to read the documentation about the parameters. Can be complicated, can point to different things. Um, in this case, we point uh, to the embedded file by the name. And then we create a button. The button has a name, internal name. It has a label to show. It has a location here. 100 by 100, 
100 points of width uh, and 20 high. So a point is about, uh, well, 72 points are uh, one inch of the US. So we know about how big this is. Uh, then we connect this, uh, the button and the action together and say, um, this, this button here, get this action on mouse up. And that's it. We close the page and there's something you would probably just copy. Just copy from the example and you are done, change the location maybe and the label and then you have a nice button and you can save the PDF in the field and release the environment. Uh, could you make it so the button doesn't just open it, but also downloads the attachment or no, out of curiosity? So let's see. Well, it's a go to action. Mm -hmm. And oops, it wasn't. So the action has uh, some flags, but there is no download. So you can have different location in the current file and external. You can link to embedded file in external file or back to the parent document where you came from. But uh, there is, there's also a new window parameter, which can request Adobe Reader to make it open in a new window. Mm -hmm. But well, there's no directly option to save it. Let's say uh, we go the other way around. Someone sends you an invoice or something else, a document, and it contains attachments. Like we in Germany, um, we use electronic invoices sometimes, and those have an XML file embedded. Mm -hmm. So you may want to get that. So let's do the other way around. We open uh, the PDF file from the container, mm -hmm. import it into memory, and then we ask Dynapity, how many embedded files do we have? So could be an hour, could be none, or we have here a loop to just loop over them, ask for name and content, put them in records, and this way we get them back. Let's just uh, make a new one here. Get our thing, and here are our attachments back. Okay, that's actually quite cool. So wait so when it pulls the attachments does it pull the, does it put the attachments into their own containers or just tell you that they exist no no we uh the script here makes new records oh okay and puts the data actually in, in the container that's cool that's very cool uh, yeah so if you get a pdf from someone let's say in europe sends you an invoice and uh you could just drop it in the solution and see if there's an xml for you but, but I love this, um, you know, this hiding of things. Like you could, um, embedded files allow you to do a lot of things. Like you could in FileMaker have um, send someone a PDF and include data you may want uh, to include for something else. Like let's say um, you could put your record data as XML or CSV into an attachment send the PDF to someone, and when you get it back somewhere else to a similar solution like yours, you could just read the, the attachment and have the record. That's cool. That's actually really cool. So yeah. you can pass the record around itself with all the information it has attached. That's very cool. There's a comment about Acrobat interface. I can't fix <laughs> it. How oh, Adobe makes a software. <laughs> and nowadays I feel um, if you click through Adobe Reader, uh, there are a ton of buttons, but I think half of the buttons just open my window to buy the full product. <laughs> this thing is a big advertisement. Ugh. So save this, close it. So I had another thing I made recently. So this is a little database to make a book. Make a book. So the idea here is uh, we have all the things of for making this PDF in mm -hmm. a database, and we dynam dynamically uh, make a book from it. So I didn't put in a license key here, I know, but uh, I put in a title uh, and an author, and it automatically makes uh, chapters 
from the headings. So let's go here and say, this is here, how awesome, I hope I didn't type it wrong. So make a new one and you see here, this is so quick. Uh, you can just click a button, make a new PDF. And if so, you click the headings, will it take you to the chapter? I yeah, guess? yeah. It takes me to the chapter. It also creates here a table of contents. So we have the links here to jump around. Oh, this is really cool. Yeah. So all on the fly. And uh, here you have some text uh, in the field. And here some more text. And actually, this is one big text. And we output it over one, two, three pages. Yeah, another three pages. I, I didn't put those. But you could have 100 pages if you want. So, <laughs> what formatting just translates, out of curiosity? Any, does any text formatting that FileMaker can do translate into the PDF? Or uh, Yeah, we, we uh, use our white style text function. So let's uh, make this bold, uh, make something italic. Uh, what else could we do? Uh, underline. Let's just run it again and see what, what comes through. Now let's make book. I did put it in which. I thought you put it in the introduction. So. Oh, there's. Oh, let me let me go to the script. So do, 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 let's scroll down. I think this is amazing. Here, white style text. Enable, disable the normal one. I'll run it again. There it is. No, there it there is. is. Yeah. Underline, table. You can yeah. have different fonts. Um, that's the question of whether you want Dyna PDF to uh, take the style text and put it in mm -hmm. uh, and translate it from FileMaker to uh, Dyna PDF, or you uh, tell it to directly use. Um, Dynamic PDF, and then you can uh, include some uh, commands to uh, do formatting yourself. But you would have to look up these. Like here, the automatic thing is, of course, much easier. So let's take a look on how this works. So we start with a fresh uh, document. We define some globals, like how big the pages should be, how big the text should be, where the text should be positioned. And then uh, we create uh, a table. And let me let me just uh, make this table visible by using here border uh, border width and grid width. So run again, and you see this is a table. And uh, the table is drawn by the plugin. And we we create the table on the beginning. Then we add all the pages, and on the fly we add entries to the table. So after we edit all the chapters, mm -hmm. we can output the table with a table of contents. So we may have some PDF pages to go before, or like a title page. Mm -hmm. We would add that. Uh, we also here just add uh, a sample page. So this adds a title page written in the script. So uh, we make a new page. We set our page width and height to be exactly the one we want. You know, for printing, you don't want to just have US letter. You want to have a specific thing like six inch wide and, and eight <laughs> inch high or so. Whatever you, you find cheap to print uh, or go to read. So fill color uh, this is black. Just no no red, no blue, no green. Oh, no, green is in the middle. Um, then pick a font name. In this case, font name is defined on the top. Uh, size is 22 as... Uh, one of the special numbers to make it bold. Then uh, we define our output direct engine for the text and then white F text right in the title of the book. If the title is bigger, this will automatically expand to the down. So that's what we use here. We say uh, where it goes and here minus one is a variable high. But then after writing it, we ask where, where the text ended. So we can put the next text with a little distance below it. 
and against set of font, uh, set a text range, uh, a rectangle, and then here center the name. Load again, 20, 20 uh, points distance. We go to the next text, and that's the copyright line. So you could just create pages on the fly and write whatever text you like. And this automatically, uh, like here, uh, let me just put in more text. Let's say, MBS specs, my first book. <laughs> so uh, now you see here the page, and I click the button, and you see it automatically move the rest down. So I have a few questions because, funnily enough, I am in a writing group. I must hear complaints about organizing PDFs for Kindle upload all the time. <laughs> So two questions, can you append a container? So like a book cover, like a miniature book cover, like they sometimes they usually have a book cover like as the first page before they go into the title. Uh, yeah, uh, so let's see, uh, let's, let's. Uh, I need a nice picture, I need something. Um, um, pictures, what do I have? Um, let's say we have here a nice uh, picture. Mm -hmm. I make uh, export as PDF, test, uh, uh, title, or whatever. So uh, now I go to my desktop here, yeah, first pages. And then I run the book script again. And that's my picture. There you go. That's really cool. That's so, extremely cool. So the idea here is we have uh, some extra pages on the front, mm -hmm. like a cover. We have some extra pages. Before the content, I could just drop something in there too. Let's say uh, our license agreement. Um, after the content, maybe something else. What do we have uh, here? Installation guide, very, very useful. Um, so run it again. And you see, here's my Dyna PDF license agreement. And on the bottom, here's my MBS installation uh, PDF. <laughs> so we can just add whatever PDF pages we have. Got it. That's the easiest thing in, in Dyna PDF because you just import things. Mm -hmm. So after we created the title page, we create uh, dummy pages for the table of contents. So in this case, uh, uh, we add a few pages. I think we make here uh, for 25 entries, we make a new page. Uh, so we'd have to be calculated in advance how many pages we need. Uh, this seems to work well uh, in our case. Um, and we create a bookmark like this adds a bookmark to the bookmark list you give it a title and you give it a page number so then we may add here our before content thing like here whatever text you have our license agreement now and then we loop over the chapters every chapter starts at a certain page count so we know that in advance we add maybe some pages you have, so every chapter could have a, its PDF, like mm -hmm. again, a chapter art, maybe a lot, nice picture for each chapter. We import that. Then we append a page with the width and height we want, and we create a name destination. That's something you can uh, use for clicking. So we, we define this page number is the target of our action, which will now be added here to the table. So we add a table row with some text. Left side is a, well, you know that, um, oh, where is it? On the top. This is a big PDF already. So, so left text is uh, the chapter name, right text is the page number. And then we add a cell action, so you can click on both sides and it will use this action to jump to the name destination. And because it's a name destination, we actually um, don't, so we could have jumps to name destination where we could later uh, define them, technically. So we create the name destination and uh, we could later define this, but I do it on the fly, it's uh, much easier. And then we also add here the bookmark again. So it shows up in the bookmark list. And then we wait, uh, we write the title for the chapter. And then uh, we write all the text here. 
with our white style text. And the key thing here is to use our page expression. So whenever the page is full of text, this thing runs. And this thing will end the current page, append a new page, and tell the plugin where to continue to output the text. So depending on how you code this, um, you could have multi-column output, or you could uh, leave some space open for placing a picture. So, Which is really awesome. This is extremely yeah. cool. <laughs> so set leading here is the line high, so we can have a bigger line high if you want. Then extra pages after the chapter. Like, again, some art, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever you like. Then, uh, oh, yeah, we can add metadata. So we can have different metadata in a PDF. And um, this can be also creator, keywords, producer, subject, title, or company. And that's information which goes in the header of the PDF and is then used by things like Spotlight to find the PDF document. Oh, got it. If you search for it. So then we draw the table. Now, we remember where we uh, made our pages for the index start and start editing them. And we write here the table of contents, title, or in this case, we write the book title. Uh, and then again, we see how much space we need. And we start our table below that. So here, you see we are drawing this table. We write the, the book title on top. Mm -hmm. And then the table below it, <laughs> those lines are really good for debugging. So for debugging, we always turn on the lines. <laughs> Let me see where things go. So um, uh, we just loop here and write as many pages for, with table of contents as we need. Uh, when the page is full and we have more content, we make a new page and draw more. And um, this works really nice. Let me just make uh, yeah, a chapter high. Let's say uh, this chapter, this has really uh, lots of text. So let's make the book again. And uh, you see uh, the table automatically gets uh, a higher cell to fit all the text. So um, then we may have some final pages, uh, and now we can add page numbers. You may have noticed uh, that uh, all the things here got page numbers. Oh, this mm -hmm. one has already some, but so if you prepare your pages for uh, for this PDF, uh, don't include the page numbers because we add them. You can decide the font, of course. Um, we load here Helvetica 12, but this could be any font. And we just write them uh, down here, uh, page high minus 50 and page width minus 100. So, well, that's this edge. And then, um, 50, no, 50 from bottom, page high minus 50. So this is the right angle defined here. Uh, See X. Oh yeah, the right edge actually starts here on the left side, and then goes all the way here. And I could just turn this to say center. Run the script again, and uh, it's now centered. So you can just change it on the fly. It's very, very dynamically. So end page. Um, no. There was ideas sometimes, uh, how about a page on the end with an ISBN number? I mean, if it's the back of the book, could be useful. Huh? Oh, we need an ISBN number. Okay, what could it be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Probably, probably not the correct uh, checksum. Let's see if it did output something. No, I need maybe a valid one. Uh, how do I get a valid ISP? Uh, if you assume that Google can dump out you one at some flavor. Uh, yeah. Okay, here. Yeah. 
Is that a complete one? Six one nine seven nine seven. That's a long one. Let's see if that's valid. Yeah. So we got a barcode. And the special thing about this barcode is this is a vector graphics. There's no pixels to see. So Right, you know, this is not a picture. This that. is actually rect. There's a list of rect angels drawn here, so it will be sharp at any size. <laughs> That's fantastic. So let's see. Uh, we built a JSON with the parameters for the barcode. So type is ESPN. Um, there's a text for the ESPN. There's a position X, position Y, width, high, what we want. Um, the barcode will be generated and then scaled to match our size. And now finally we can save the PDF and also export it here so it opens automatically. That so. is extremely cool. Now everyone who needs to do anything about book Books in FileMaker can do them all with Dynabia. <laughs> this is extremely cool. I'm going to play around with this. Uh, so thank you, Christian. Seriously, this is awesome. Uh, we have officially oh, this hit. Is, hmm? There's another one, another script oh. also in the file to make the cover, you know? Yes. I know, backside and some space between. But you can do whatever you like. And I think uh, having all this, um, uh, having all these options and making anything on the fly and whatever you like, you could have everything in fields. Like you could have a field defining for your book how, how big the width is from the left, how big it's from the right. You know, what style you like the you could perm, everything can be a parameter in a table if you're messing with ebooks this is like invaluable because like i said i'm not publishing ebooks but i have a lot of friends who are and i hear constantly all the time oh this width isn't right oh i made this entire thing and i the pages don't look right or i have to replace all these links at the end of all my other books and the book is totally fine but the links need to be updated and that's a whole process and margaret i hate dealing with that <laughs> This is a very cool answer to the question that I would have never considered. Uh, so this is awesome. Uh, okay. <laughs> all of today has been awesome. This one is personally awesome to me because I'm into ebooks and all that jazz. But everything today has been very cool. Thank you very much, Christian. Uh, I think we're going to wrap up unless you got anything else you want to toss at us. No, no, it's fine. Tomorrow we continue with some new features. <laughs> Awesome. With that being said, I'm going to run the end credits. Have a good one today, everybody. Bye. Biomaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Biomaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir.